Welcome to the 100K course, 100K course, 100K. We're gonna call it the 100K course. Uh, that means that this channel has reached 100,000 subscribers, which is really, really incredible. Thank you so much for being here and trusting me with your time. Hopefully you're learning things in exchange for your time. Um, I guess we should do a celebration. Here are some balloons and celebration. Let's get right to today's video. Today's video is about being an introverted wedding photographer and it might seem a little counterintuitive to be somebody that is both introverted and a wedding photographer because by definition, you're going to a wedding, you're going to a party to photograph and be in a social environment for eight or 10 or 12 hours. And as somebody that's introverted, that's incredibly mentally draining if I'm communicating with people. When I'm at a party or an event, I really have about 45 minutes, maybe 35 minutes of good time before I actually have to go and kind of separate from the crowd and just uh, do my own thing for like five or 10 or 15 minutes, which is especially hilarious um, if we have people over at our house here um, that I separate myself from everyone for a little bit just to kind of mentally recharge because I really do need that time. Um, I am incredibly introverted. I have become somewhat okay in front of the camera um, just by doing it so much that I've been making videos probably for uh, like 10 or 12 years now and just trying to get over my fear of talking to a camera and feeling like an idiot and eventually you do get there so maybe that's that's some hope if you're if you're trying to get in front of the camera and you just feel shy um, I find that if I am in an environment completely alone nobody's home except for the cat over here and the dog at my feet um, and I'm totally comfortable in this environment I also know for this video specifically that I have final edit over it so no one else is gonna see this footage and I'm just gonna edit it um, and release a final product this has been a bit of a tangent so back to actual wedding day um, and as an introverted person uh, so I guess like you're either introverted or you're extroverted or you're some sort of weird blend of the two um, that kind of comes and goes in waves. I am primarily introverted. I can do that 35, 45 minutes of like socialization um, before I need a bit of a break. I'll speak to extroverted people quickly here. And if you're an extroverted person and you can like just go into a party and that's like where you get your energy and you have fun, you gain so much more access um, to things like you can just be in the middle of the dance floor um, and everyone around you and you can be getting candid photos from like two feet away from them. Um, I unfortunately can't do that. And I rely a lot more on longer lenses and really getting candid moments that I'm not a part of. So that's kind of the style difference. Um, the other good news is as an introverted person, a wedding day, you're really alone with your camera for most of the day. For bridal prep, even though there's other people in the room, if you're just kind of quiet and don't talk to anyone, typically everybody just kind of goes along with their day. They're all friends, so they'll all talk. And you can just kind of document that, and it's not weird. It doesn't feel weird. When you're photographing details or you're photographing the ceremony, you're in the company of people, but you're not interacting, which does actually help me recharge. Um, and the only time that I'm really in control of people and constantly communicating is during family photos and the couple photos and um, I would say the bridal party photos which was the hardest part for me to get over that I was okay usually with my couples because I knew them and um, we had a little bit of a rapport. Family is very simple for me. It's like everybody just kind of line up. Please don't run away. Everybody get close together, smile, face the camera, stand in good light. Uh, but for the actual bridal party photos and just kind of dropping myself into this group of like eight or 10 or six or 25 people like we had on the weekend. Um, and just trying to be the person that manages all of these adults uh, is very, very challenging for me. So that is the main time that I have to be working really hard to maintain my energy level um, when directing people like that. And I find the easiest way to do this is just to come in with a strong idea of exactly the photos that I want to take. Um, and that way I'm not forced to think too much on the spot. I find that during the wedding day, the more that I make decisions, kind of the lower my tank gets. And if I can come in and I know that I want to do these five shots, that I can have that mental list, create those shots um, and move on from there. Sometimes that's not always possible because I don't know the situation I'm getting myself into. So I show up a little bit early and I kind of go around and I scout and I figure out the shots that I want to take before I even go and see the couple, before I see the wedding party. So that when we go outside, I have a super specific vision of exactly what I want to do. Obviously I'm open to permutations of that, that if they want to do this shot or that shot or whatever, I'm totally happy to accommodate. But for the most part, a lot of my hard critical thinking is done by myself. So I don't have to be making too many decisions, managing too many internal and external factors while I'm photographing the bridal party. Another thing that I do that my clients find really, really helpful um, is I guess like attracts like, so a lot of my clients are also introverted and it's their wedding day and it is literally all of their friends and family that they know in one room together, which can be really, really extra mentally draining. So what I encourage my couples to do is actually take some time for them, um, for themselves to just go and be the two of them on their wedding day, which uh, I think is one of the most memorable points of the wedding day uh, is when you actually get to hang out with your significant other and you're not just in the constant company of every single person that you know 
And I think that is one of the most memorable parts of the wedding day because it's really overwhelming just having everyone that you know in one room. And if you're an introverted person, you need a little bit of an escape. And this is for sure one of the most memorable parts of my couple's wedding days. And uh, it's usually the thing they comment after saying like, thank you for forcing us to take like 10 minutes uh, alone together. Uh, and it's, I guess like it's, it's, it's for them, but it's also a little bit selfish because usually after the couple's photos, once I feel that I have enough, um, I, I don't really have like a hard end like, oh, like that's all, like I'm gonna go to the ceremony now, bye. Uh, so I kind of use it as a segue. I'm gonna go photograph some details, candids of guests as they start to arrive if we were doing a first look. Um, and that also gives me a chance to recharge rather than shooting, uh, I'm gonna use a photography analogy with this. If you own a Nikon D750, you're going to be very familiar with this analogy. Um, and basically it's like your camera buffer filling up that if you own a Nikon D750, you have nine shots before your buffer's full. So if you're taking all those shots and you get to eight and then you hit nine, at that point when the buffer's full, it takes way longer to write to the card for some unknown reason. And if I am constantly interacting with people and I reach kind of the limit that I'm comfortable with and I go beyond it, I'm going to be a lot more drained than if I would have just stopped whenever I kind of started to feel myself approaching that limit. And for photographs with a couple or photographs with the wedding party, you can absolutely do them at another time. The couple specifically like, I usually tell them whenever we're leaving that session that we'll do some more photos, just the two of them, during sunset or during blue hour or nighttime or whenever. And I also find that spacing out the couple session like that does a lot mentally good for me that I can just kind of come in in these short bursts and do a lot of really good work really fast that I've kind of already scouted and I already have a pretty good idea what I'm going to do. Um, and then come back and just back into like the reception that people are speaking, but I'm just taking candid photos. So if you are an introverted person, uh, have no worries about being a wedding photographer. You don't need to be a crazy extroverted, uh, like on the dance floor, uh, like life of the party, because I am certainly quite the opposite of that. And I think that there's two very specific styles. And I think that if you're an introverted person, there's a good chance that you're going to be working with a lot of people that are very similar personality types to you, which I think points to the entire topic of um, making sure that you display your personality on your website because that is going to be the stickiest thing when people come to your site, that if they resonate with your base core personality, there's a big chance that they're gonna book you. So embrace the introverted aspects of your life and you will start to attract other introverted people, which is a good thing because then you're both going to be kind of in the same mental mind space uh, on the wedding day and I find that like minds work a lot better together. So so that is what I think about being an introverted wedding photographer. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you're learning things in exchange for the investment of your time here. Uh, I really appreciate you being part of this and I can't believe that we've hit 100K balloons. That's enough balloons. This 30 day course is all going to be about actual wedding day photography, um, editing, things like that. Uh, if you're interested in the business aspects of things, that's either all in my advanced wedding photography marketing course or in my Patreon, which is $10 a month, which is a really, really great deal. Um, in Patreon, if you spend the $10, um, you can, one, you can cancel it at any time. Uh, two, there is a whole list of things uh, available to you, like a full 30 minute pricing video that's a full walkthrough of my actual pricing document, a two hour destination wedding video, how to book destination weddings, my email templates, full live consult with a wedding couple, the audio from that, and lots of other things that you immediately get access to. You get all of it for $10 every month and new videos every Monday for specifically wedding photography business. But this course will all be free forever and it's going to cover everything that I actually know about shooting and photographing weddings. So thank you for being here. I will see you tomorrow.